Today, we're playing with Sales Funnel Math. What's up guys, Jason here, Aspiring Entrepreneur. And in this quick video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use Excel to design your sales funnel. So at the end, I'm going to give you a link to everything that we're going to be building here, but I also want to show you exactly how to build it, even if you're new to Excel. I promise we're not gonna get super advanced, we're not gonna get super complicated, even if you're one of those people who never really opens Excel, because you're like, well, that's just for nerds, right? But anyway, it's going to be super simple, super easy, we're just gonna to be doing some very basic math and using some very basic functions in Excel to create your sales funnel and more importantly plan out how much money you need to invest to get your sales funnel to profitability. So I'm going to show you some basic formulas on how you can calculate how much you need to spend on ads and how changing certain elements and conversion leverage points in your sales funnel affects your overall profitability. This is something that everyone should be doing in addition to deciding whether or not you're going to do a VSL or a webinar or a launch. You also need to look at some of the math and understand how the analytics are going to drive your success. So with that, we're going to dive into my screen here and I'm going to walk you through a very basic process, a very basic template for designing your sales funnel and figuring out your numbers in Excel. Okay, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Again, I'm gonna go very quickly through this because I don't wanna bog you down with all the details. I don't want this to turn into a how to use Excel tutorial for 2017, right? So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna start by showing you there's this lifecycle marketing map um, that was created by the guys over at leadquizzes.com and this is included in the downloadable template and also on the channel I have lots of videos that go over and talk about the methodologies behind a sales funnel so if any of these things don't quite make sense in terms of the terminology you have those videos to check out here we're just going to be looking at the sales funnel map and putting together our pipeline in Excel so I'm going to go ahead and pre-format this five okay perfect I'm gonna add a little bit of branding. Ah, much better. Okay, here we go. So our sales funnel, of course, starts with driving traffic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through each step of the sales funnel process and then go through what we need to track and measure. And again, this is a projection. And as you drive traffic and as you your numbers come in, you'll be able to adjust these. But this is a good way of knowing kind of what to expect on the outset. So you know, if I'm gonna spend five or $600, what can I expect in return? And how long is it gonna take, right? So we're gonna start off with ads and when you run ads, you need a budget. So whatever your budget is gonna be. And then we need to know our cost per click and that will give us total clicks. All right, so this is what we wanna look at for the first round here. And so our budget will say we're spending $997, the price point of what our product is gonna be. And for cost per click, let's say it's $3 and that gives us total clicks. So let's go ahead and divide these two guys to give us how many clicks we would get. Now, during this process, we don't want you know halves or thirds of people, right? It, it always needs to be a full person. So what you can do is you can come up to the menu and click this guy twice to decrease the decimal, or you can put round in front of your formula to make sure it rounds the number and it'll be up or down. You can also do round, up or down, but again, we're just being s s simple here, just round the number. So then the traffic's driven to the landing page, so we need to know total visitors to your landing page, and then we need to know what our conversion rate is going to be, and then we need to look at conversions. How many conversions did we get? So the total visitors, this is easy, that's just the number of clicks you got. And conversion rate, let's go ahead and say, let's give ourselves 30%. And then that will give us conversions. Again, I'm gonna round. We're just gonna take 332 times 30% and round that number gives us 100 conversions, right? So these are people that sign up to our email list. And once, oh, if I spell email right, again, I'm, I'm, there's probably already misspellings here. So once you have emails, then we have subscribers. And once we have subscribers, of course, we're gonna be sending them emails. So we're going to need to look at our open rates. And then in those emails, we're gonna have clicks. So we need to look at our click through rates. Okay, hopefully you're still tracking with me here. So we have subscribers equals conversion. So we have 100 
100 conversions gives us 100 subscribers. And so now we need to think what is our open rate gonna be? I'm just going to be crazy and give ourselves 100%. It's definitely shouldn't be that high. And then let's say 90% for your click through rates on the emails, right? So now that we have the clicks, where are they going to? They're going to your sales letter or webinar, whatever you're driving traffic to. So we have views, the people who showed up, then we have the drop rate, the people who didn't make it to the pitch. Then we have the pitch views, and then we have the conversion rate of the presentation. So let's go ahead and start with views. Oh, that's 90%. <laughs> Wondering when I was gonna fix that, right? So we have 100 subscribers times the number of people who open them, 100%. And then again, times the number of people who clicked. So that gives us 90. Again, if it gives you an odd number, you can just add round in front of it. Go to the end, comma, zero. And there we go. So that gives us the views. So the drop rate is just a percentage that is represents people who don't really make it to the pitch, right? So you don't wanna get super complicated with this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say 50% of the people don't make it to the pitch. So that means out of the 90 people that are there, if mine's 50, that's 45 people that made it to the final pitch, right? And I'm just adding the round formula in, so when we play with numbers later, everything still works. And then we wanna look at our conversion rate. So the conversion rate here, this is what I kinda of do differently than other people. The conversion rate here is the number of people that made it to the order page, because that's going to be our next and final step, right? Because we do have, there is something called shopping cart abandonment. So visits and then abandon rate. Okay, I know this is a lot here, but stick with me. This is gonna make sense in a second. So conversion rate, what is our conversion rate? I'm just gonna copy this for the formatting and I'm gonna say we have a 15% conversion rate. So that means out of the 45 people, 15% of them actually click through to see the shopping cart, right? And so now on the shopping cart page, not everyone who clicked is gonna buy. I mean, that's just the reality of it. So if you wanna get very, very conservative with your funnel numbers, you can add here a abandon rate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this at zero for now. Uh, just for simplicity's sake, but you can add an abandonment rate in and kind of play with that number going forward. And what I just realized I forgot to do here is actually highlight the numbers that you are in charge of you know, playing with when it comes to your sales funnel. So I always like changing the color of those cells so we know which ones we should be messing with and which ones are kind of static formulas that we don't need to play with. Okay, so now we've gone through our entire funnel. Now it's time to look at the revenue side of it. So we're gonna start here with total sales. And I put this at the top. This might seem a little backwards, but I put this at the top just so as you play with these numbers, it's really easy to see your end results up here. So your total sales are going to represent the number of people who visited your page minus the number of people who abandoned. So to get the number of people who abandoned, we're gonna round down this time and we're going to take the total number of people and then subtract that, sorry, multiply that, I'm already doing the subtraction, times the abandonment rate to give us the total number of people who purchased, right? So this is zero. So if I went and put this at 50%, now only four people purchased, but we're gonna leave that at zero. Again, you can pause the video to see the formula that I'm using here. I'm just taking this guy minus the percentage of this guy. So that gives us total sales. So what's the product price? So the product price in this particular instance is 997. And of course, this will be changed based upon whatever your product or service is that you're selling. And then we have our revenue, right? So here's how much money we actually make. And of course, we're just gonna take total sales and multiply it by our product price. Not bad, actually this is turning out a little more unrealistic than I wanted it to. So let's go ahead and add the ad cost in because we wanna know how much did we spend to acquire these customers, right? And so now we're gonna be let with left <laughs> with net profit. Profit, if I can spell profit correctly. You. And that will simply be your total sales minus your costs. 
for a grand total of just under 6,000 in sales. Now, all of these numbers, of course, are very, very fictitious. I'm not representing, saying it by any means that this is realistic. Really, when you're just getting started, it's gonna be something closer to this, oh, 70 drop rate, 65 at least, and your conversion rate's probably gonna be Oh, around 10 to 15, right? So you're more likely to be looking at something like this. But what's really cool is now you can see you spent $997 on ads. You know how much you pay per ad and you have, you're making a qual a really good estimate of how many people are going to sign up on your landing page, how people are going to interact in your email, how many, you know, views and your conversion rate and shopping cart abandonment rate. And based on your product price, you can start to play around with these numbers and see, okay, where are the leverage points in what I have, right? So if we took this price, if we drop this product down to, let's say 497, for instance, all of a sudden we aren't positive. But if it's a lower price, maybe we get 20% instead of 15%, or maybe we get 25%. And then you'll notice, well, okay, if I drop it by half, that means I have to increase my conversion rate on my sales letter by another 10%. Is that possible based on the numbers I'm looking at? Nobody knows when you're just getting started, right? Even when I'm working with clients, we go through this process all the time because it's a lot of math and you never know what in here is gonna be close to what you estimate and what in, in here is just gonna to be totally, totally off. And so that is all there is to it, to putting together a sales funnel pipeline in Excel. And if you like what you see, but don't really want to go through the effort, you can go download the complete sales funnel pipeline Excel template over at the Aspire notebook. And we also added a little cool chart in here. So you can, this chart kind of changes based upon what's going on. I have a link in the description if you want to learn how to build this chart as well. Another channel did a great video on that. So I don't want to duplicate his content because it was better than I could have explained how to do charts. Charts are definitely not my specialty. So make sure to go ahead, hit that like button, and then go over to jasonwhaling.com and sign up for the Aspire Notebook to get this sales funnel Excel template. All right, not too bad, right? We didn't get too crazy in there. So in the description, I have a link to the Aspire Notebook where I actually have a Excel template for you so you don't actually have to go through and build everything we just went through, but now you understand the math and you understand how you can design and build out and just see all the different leverage points and really understand how the different numbers affect your profitability and your chances of success when it comes to setting up your sales funnel. So if you don't wanna build this yourself, you really don't really wanna dive into everything that we just did today, go ahead and check out the link to the Aspire notebook where I have this for you to just download for free. So thank you so much for watching. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and hit that like button and then subscribe because over on my YouTube channel, I'm going from A to Z and everything in between on what it takes to build a sales funnel from scratch, everything digital marketing, growing your YouTube audience, and of course, tactical and analytical videos like this one, really diving into the nuts and bolts of sales funnel design. So I encourage you to join myself and other aspiring entrepreneurs on this crazy journey of building a business. So go ahead and comment below if you have any questions on what we covered today. And until the next video, like, subscribe, and keep building the business you love. Take care.